Episode four, here we are, and we are talking about frame rates today. Three different frame rates that we're gonna talk about. 24 frames, 60 frames, and 120 frames. When makes sense or what? Why am I not talking about 30 frames per second? Well, I don't have much experience with that. If you're filming in real time, use 24 frames per second. People might tell you otherwise. I come from a filmmaking background, so that's what I'm gonna say. Let's go ahead, let's break down the three different frame rates, then we'll dive into different things about frame rates and what you need to know. So first thing, 24 frames per second. Very basic, we talked about this in the first video. 24 frames per second is real time. So this is no slow-mo, this is whenever you know you're not gonna slow down your picture at all. And maybe it's for an interview right now, I'm filming 24 frames per second because there's no chance I'm gonna need any kind of slow-mo for this right here. Why would I wanna slow down me talking? Would it make sense at all? So that's why we do 24 frames per second. But you can keep any of the frame rates real time. Why would you wanna do 24? Whenever you're filming 24 frames per second, your shutter should be around one over 50. Twice your frame rate is what your shutter should be. So you get that motion blur that you like whenever you're at 24 frames per second. You get more motion blur at 24 than you will get at 120. Just how it is because your shutter should always reflect whatever your frame rate is at. Now 60 frames, when are you gonna use 60 frames? So 60 frames per second is pretty much twice 24. I know it's a little bit more, whatever, but you'll be able to slow your picture down by a little bit lower than 50%. So you can make it half speed. This is not gonna be super slow-mo, but it is gonna be slow-mo enough for if you want to do something maybe like slowing down event videos or something like that. The main time that I like to use 60 frames per second is actually whenever I am shooting an event or something where I'm capturing real time where maybe somebody will be talking so I know with my camera that I have, which is the Canon R5, I will still be able to have audio, but I can keep it real time without it really looking too jittery and I can also slow it down if I need to. The unpredictable times is a good time to use 60 frames per second. Another thing to consider is that your camera might be able to shoot 24 frames per second in 4K, but not 60 frames per second in 4K. You have to be aware that you're gonna lack quality when you're shooting 1080, 60 and putting that in the same timeline as a 4K clip. You're gonna be able to notice it a little bit. Maybe an untrained eye won't be able to notice it but it's something you should be aware of so now 120 frames per second this is one of those kind of specs that you might not have at first your first camera probably won't have the availability to shoot in 120 but it's really nice to have if you've ever watched a Peter McKinnon video he shoots his b-roll in 120 frames per second I think a lot of people use it as a crutch. So at the basic sense, 120 frames per second, you're gonna be able to slow it down a ton. If you're in a 24 frames per second timeline, you're pretty much gonna be able to slow it down by five times. It's gonna be play at 20% speed, which is amazing. And if that's what you're going for, if you're shooting sports, maybe, if you're shooting a product video, maybe, Maybe if somebody's jumping into water, going off a dirt bike ramp, sports is a great time to use it because if you can show real time and then speed ramp, maybe do a little tail whip or something and then go back into real time, it's such a good look. As you see in this clip right here, this is an NFL clip that I got. This is in 120 frames per second. So I was able to keep real time for a little bit, then slow down, back to real time, then slow down. And I think it looks really good. But there's one thing that if you're shooting on Canon, it's gonna be a problem. The one thing that Sony does better than Canon, yeah, there's a couple of things, but with me being a Canon shooter, I don't have audio in 120 frames per second. Are you gonna need audio for your video that you're shooting? If you are, well, don't shoot in 120 then. It stinks, you know, I can get a higher level camera that could then shoot audio in 120, but don't have that right now. But anyways, that is something that you will have to think about. 120 frames per second is going to be the slowest. 60 frames per second is going to be kind of slow. 24 frames per second is going to be real time. So those are the three that you're really going to have to think about. The three that I really only go back and forth from. 
I don't go to any other ones. You can go to some other weird frame rates. You can go to 50 frames per second on some cameras. Don't really like that personally. The biggest thing is what is the feel of your project? What do you want it to feel like? How do you want it to be taken in? Some of my personal favorite videos, ads, whatever you wanna call it, are fashion videos. Now, for fashion videos, they have a very specific look with this kind of rugged, handheld feel. The best way to get that rugged feel, if you're shooting handheld, you want that shaky cam, go to 24 frames per second, get that motion blur, and it will feel very raw. It won't feel very cinematic, but it'll just feel good i don't know there's something about that creative touch that 24 frames per second brings now if you want a cinematic look yes you can shoot 24 frames per second and you can have it locked off you can have it on a tripod and by all means it'll look pretty good but if you want that cinematic feel for a wedding if you want a cinematic feel for anything else you're probably going to want to shoot slow-mo if i'm shooting a wedding i'm going to shoot pretty much the entire day in 4k 60. if i'm recording them saying their vows well maybe i'll switch to 24 but any other time during the day, Brad walking down the aisle, the kiss, I'm gonna go 60 frames so I can slow it down a little bit, but if I decide to go real time, it's not gonna stand out. So kind of just recapping over what you need to do and when you should use the different things. 24 frames per second, your shutter should be around one over 50, which is double your frame rate. And then in 24 frames per second, you're gonna wanna use that in maybe a more stylistic video or a talking head video. As as I mentioned before, this is being filmed in 24 frames per second. 60 frames per second. Well, that is going to be able to be slowed down by 50%. Your shutter speed should be around one over 120 for this. So then it is double your frame rate once again. This is great to be used in an unpredictable scenario, an event, a wedding, whatever it may be. Whenever you don't know if you're gonna want to use real time or slow-mo, use 60 frames per second because that is going to be able to allow you to go in either direction. Now, 120 frames per second. Your shutter speed should be around one over 250, which is double your frame rate. Now that is what mirrorless or DSLR cameras are gonna allow you to do. If you're on a cinema camera, well, I don't know why you're watching a photographer to filmmaker video, but it would be one over 240, which is exactly twice your frame rate. And then whenever you would want to use 120 frames per second, you would want to use it for sports. You would want to use it for anything that's showing a lot of motion that you will want to show the speed ramping. You want to show very, very slow-mo. Keep in mind, if you're shooting on Canon, you will not have audio here. That's at least from the R5 down. If you're on the C70, if you're on the R5C, I believe you will have audio. Don't mark my word, don't have much experience with those, but you'll wanna use 120 frames per second whenever you want super slow mo, whenever you want that buttery cinematic feel. Those are frame rates right there. That's all you need to know. There is 240 frames per second, which is super slow-mo, which isn't on most cameras, and there's even higher frame rates. But the thing is, you just want to know the basics so that whenever you're in a specific scenario, you know what to do. You don't want to record an interview in 120 frames per second. It's a waste of space, and it's not going to look that great. It's going to look jittery. And so if you know these things, it's going to make you a better filmmaker. You already know the photography world. Now we're learning the filmmaker world. Thank you for watching. Next video, we're gonna be talking about resolutions. The difference between 720, 1080, 4K, 8K, 6K, whatever it may be, and why you would use different ones in different scenarios. Peace.